our concerns. Uh, you probably already experienced this fact, meaning that the as this table can show, the white as a race is projected to be 50 percent of the U.S. population by 2043, and continue that will be below 50 percent. So there is no more a majority race. Actually, this is even today. Like, if you look at the baby that born today, more than 50 percent of them are not white, are colored people, because reason is the aging population, the older the bigger proportion of white. So when we look at overall, yes, it will become 20 years now, but actually for the new generation, they already living in a poor business society today. So it's coming. Now, why is it important? Now we know we're living in a democracy. In a democracy, one major thing is the population proportional representation. Now look at some of data today. You know, uh, let me just give you some quick statistics that I remember. Uh, in 2015, we have 22 million Asian Americans, which is counted about 5.7% of the total population. Do you know how much tax we actually pay? The Asian Americans in 19, 2015 actually paid 7.1% of the total tax paid in this country. So we are paying more than our population proportion. On one hand, that is a good news because that means the median income for Asian Americans are higher than even the white. Okay? And then they have higher. So when you have a higher income, you still pay more tax, which is fine, which is fair. But look at the other side is, in terms of political office and political elected officers and representatives, what is our percentage? It's about 1.2, 1.3%. That's the problem. Well, if we imagine, if our goal should be a population proportional representation. Let's assume by 2043, when this country become a plural society, let's, the, the forecast is Asian population will be between like 10 to 12 percent, somewhere there. Let's use 10 as a lower end. This is what we should have. We're going to have 100 senators, we should have 10, right? Asian American senators. We don't have that now, right? There are 435 House representatives. We should have proportionally 43 House representatives. And we know the governors of the state we should have five Asian American governors. And of course, for state legislature, there are 7,000 plus. We should have 700 plus. The officials elected as Asian Americans. And the county head, we have almost we have more than 3,100 companies in this country. So, I'm also saying that expected they should be next 25 to 30 years, we should have an Asian American president elected. And we already have many, you know, quite a few running now. The point is, this should be our goal. We should have, and we can only do that together. All the Asian Americans do together. If we could break up by individual population, the uh, uh, nationalities and different set of rules, too small. Now let's take a look at this thing here. This is a man of AAPI. Everybody knows AAPI, right? Asian American Pacific Islanders. That's our population. If you look at this man, the, the yellow, the light yellow representing there's about half percent of our population are Asian in those counties. The darkest one is 18%. That's clearly in California. <laughs> okay. That's in 1990. Okay? 25 years later, look at this one. That's 2016. Wow. Okay? That's the power of Asian American. If we don't, if we don't know that, we're not in power. We should, be, we should be in power. We need to know. Now, of course, we can say, well, even with that, so what's this? This is the picture you can see. That's US population and Asian American population size. You can see the difference. So we're
course, yield is 5, 5, 7 percent right now. But among those 5, 7 percent, the Chinese group, Indians, Philippines, the big ones, and there were others, and there are some others, you know, we, I didn't show all of them, but the point is, that's our problem. We have to be together. Then become that piece, and then when the water rises, all of us are lifted. I just want to give you one example. Everybody knows last year we had a um, movie, right? It's called the Three Cities Registration. Yeah. Many people <laughs> watch it. <laughs> not everybody will like that. By the way, myself, I look at something I'm not totally agree. I say, you know, why did we portray this way, that way? But that's not the point that I want to communicate today. That's not the point. The point is, because that movie is fully Asian has and is breaking the box office for continuous few weeks, what this demonstrates is Asian American status has been lifted in this country. And even for the color and for the corporation, they realize they have to pay attention to this population because of the number there, and they will have high income. There's a power of purse, right? <laughs> we have that. So that's so I think the point is not whether you like the movie or great is that, but you already benefit from that. For example, after the movie, when you walk on the street, you may maybe more people pay attention to you. Say so yeah, Asian American is also a very important part of US society. So this is the idea, this is the concept of when the water rises. Rising water lift all boats. We're all together in this. That's the reason why we need to work together. That's our situation, right? And let's see, can we make a difference? This is the data we have. Now, I hear many people talk, you know, talking to me and say, yeah, we're too small. We, we vote or don't vote, it doesn't really matter. You know? And sometimes they say, you know, the people I vote, it didn't get elected. You know, we're still having that voice. Think again. I want to express, you know, express my opinion on this one. This one is 2016 election. This is based on AI data. And you can see how many was presented by each group, subgroup. And uh, Indians on top, doing very well. <laughs> you just around your vote. And Chinese not doing too well. You can see they're at the bottom. They place and imagine, this is important to know, even the 48% registered and also only 41% voted, that means really that actually only 20% people voted. You see that how that goes, the mass goes? Because you start with, you already have that not even registered. So you already lose your vote, right? And, and sometimes we say, okay, well, if we, I vote, but I don't think my candidate can win, so I just don't vote. That's wrong. Why is wrong? Actually, whether the candidate you vote, win or not, is not as important as the fact you actually voted. Because now this whole society is going into a data-driven society, right? If you didn't vote, you don't exist, right? If you don't have number, it didn't happen. So you kind of, that's the idea. So when each election is over, politicians, they, what are they looking for? They're looking for last election, how many people actually voted? Who are they? If Asians never vote, they don't exist. So they don't, next election, they don't pay attention to you. They can just ignore you. You become marginalized. So whether the candidate you voted actually win or not is not as important as the fact you actually voted. Because the more you voted, next time they'll say, we better look at this group because they can make a difference. Now, the other thing is, the other chart you look at here, you see, in 2006, there are about 58, that there were 59 election districts. These are congressional election districts. We have 435 congressional election districts. So all of that 59 of those have more than 10% Asian population in 
their election history. But look at in 2016, that's already increased to 78. If you count in by 5% as a threshold, you'll see in 2006, it's 122, but in 2016, it's 165. Now, do you, and I don't know how many of you know that actually if you follow election or not, more than 80% of all the elections are determined by how much percentage, less than 5% the voting difference between the two candidates. So if, if that kind of happened to be in a community, you have more than 10 percent Asian communities, your vote can make it swing very lot, can make that difference. But if you don't vote, you don't care, of course, you don't count, you don't exist. So I think it is important that for us to understand this idea, this participate, be part of the democratic process. And if you don't show up, if you don't do it, then you have no impact. Now, another thing I want to talk about is, of course, what's the significance of Asian American run for president? Now we know there are Kamala Harris, and there's Andrew Young, and there may be others in the world come up. The point, and many of you might be talking to me and say, well, they can't ever, they don't have a chance. You know, again, I think they miss the point. That's not the point. I believe just the fact that Andrew Young came out will inspire many young generations, as you see. You see, when many Asian Americans, my children included, when they grow up, they never see an Asian American candidate running for president, right? So in their minds, subconsciously, they feel, we're only good at maths, we're only good at engineering, we're only going to be a doctor, right? They don't think they have that leadership capability. But as you can already see from Andrew Young, what kind of leadership he can bring to the table. And so the fact that he demonstrated leadership is already changing our image and lifting our status, again, inspiring the next generation. And of course, also give our generation hope in this country. So I think that's the real significance of Asian American candidates for president. Actually, so that's why I want to like to say the weather one most for the API candidates is a personalization. Then, but the increase of political participation because of Asian Americans run for the presidency is victory for Asian American population as well. Okay? Whether it was less than if because I think because because the Asian American candidate come out this year, we're going to have increased participation in the 2020 president election. That's a victory. Because any candidate the next time looking at it is, oh wow, so many Asian American voting this time, next time I better pay attention to them. So they'll come to you. So we'll be more closer at the table. That's the whole point I want to emphasize today is all goals are lifted when water rises. This is why Asian Americans must work together to achieve multi-ethnic democracy in a pluralist society. Now, how do we do that? Actually, as CL, USA, and, and I mean, we've been working on some data scientists. So one of the things we're thinking, doing, we're going to share with you, is that uh, we already going to do that. We should have it empower all Asian American communities use information and data for a long way to have all the counties, you know, have all their data of how many Asian Americans in each one should be accessible instantly, you know, through the internet. Yeah, I don't know if I have that uh, okay, that's, that's all right, the last one. I didn't have that, that's okay. We're gonna, in the future, we're gonna put on the internet, this is what I want to let you know, is imagine anybody falling around all this. They want to know. Oh, I usually don't activate it for Andrew Young for long. Andrew Young this time, when he tried to reach out to Asian American communities, so we just create a map for them. So Andrew Young can then go to any county, any state, just by a touch on the map, instant to say how many Asian Americans in this particular county. Right? So that helped them to organize their troops to reach out to those you know, populations. And imagine we match that up with all the 435 
congressional district with all their population there. And down the road further, we can actually map out this whole 7,000 plus state legislation seat and local schools. All these can be, you know, big data, all these can be done there. We can use data to power all those I mean, in real time. And imagine, map that up with the last three elections we got. And kind of how much they lose by what margin. Imagine the power that at any time they know that exactly. So not only they can encourage us to participate, but also inspire our young people to come up. I can win. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Jack. This was so interesting. Wasn't it interesting to you guys? Yes. I think numbers are powerful. And thank you for sharing that with us. I'm always saying the same thing, you know, that there's power in numbers. If you are not going to participate, what what uh, Anthony said earlier, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And um, thank you for reiterating that.